Hey, I'm Matt, and I've just bought a HP Z600 workstation, a machine that's 12 years old, uh, being released back in March 2009. Here I'll show you why I've bought this and how good it still is. Welcome to Crazy Logic. So the HP uh, Z range of workstations were released back in March 2009 with a first generation refresh in uh, 2010, a year later. Um, which moved to support Westmere as well as Nalem Intel processors. The range has four lines, the Z200, Z400, Z600 and the Z800 in the first generation. Um, and they've refreshed them uh, into a fourth series now. So there was two two in the first generation as in uh, a set and then a refresh with the same um, model numbers. And then they've had more generations since. So why a Z600? Uh, why is it an upgrade um, from what I had previously? Well, I had a Dell uh, Optiplex 7010, which had an i3-2120, uh, two core, four thread with eight gig of RAM. Um, it did me okay for most tasks, but I was doing a lot of video editing and that's when it sort of hit its limits. Um, I'm also wanting to run a lot more VMs at the moment. So previously, I was running, I was able to run three VMs on my 7010 while recording, um, but it was a bit glitchy every now and then. So it was a little bit too much. So I have jumped up to a way more powerful machine, which is the Z600. Um, so Z600 uh, I have is a version two. It can take two 5650 CPUs, which I have pulled out of my stack of servers which is underneath they're quite old um, still very capable CPUs um, I have many of them so that's why I wanted to use them I also have uh, filled it up with RAM so six slots of RAM on this machine um, six 8 gig sticks of DDR3 RAM that I've again pulled from this stack of servers I also moved over my GTX 1050 um, from my 7010 which is my graphics card my one terabyte SSD I moved across and there's a spinning rust as well that I moved across for stuff I don't care about. I'm not really concerned about the GPU PCIe bottleneck. So the GPU, the, the GTX 1050 is PCI um, version three. Uh, this is PCI version two, uh, X16. So it's in the X16 slot, which gives me 16 gigabytes a second to play with of bandwidth. Never gonna go anywhere near that. So not too concerned about that. The onboard storage in this, it has six channels of SATA, three gigabytes a second. Um, my crucial SSD is an MX500, so it's a SATA 6 gigabytes uh, SSD. This can only do 3 gigabytes, so there's a bit of a bottleneck there with, this, with the read writes. I'm losing about 30% of uh, maximum performance. I'm also losing out on USB 3.0. My 7010 had USB 3.0 to the front, uh, but I have an added PCIe card I can put in should I need to. It's worth noting that the first generation Z600s actually had two versions. So the version I have is a version two. It can support the 5600 series CPUs. The first generation can only support the 5500 series of CPUs. You can tell the difference by the motherboard, uh, which has a part number of 460840-002 for the version one, and 460480-003 for the version two. The version one also only supports EEC DIMMs, uh, with a maximum of 24 gigabytes, but other users have reported up to 48 gigabytes being possible using um, six 8 gig PC 10600E modules. Uh, and the version two, which is one I have, has a spec support of 48 gigabytes of RAM, um, but other users have specified that they can get up to 96, but using 616 PC 10600R DIMMs. So as I say, I have, um, two 5650 CPUs in here, so they're uh, six cores, 12 threads each, and there's two of them, it's a dual socket uh, system, and I have 48 gig of um, RAM in there, which is six eight gigabyte sticks of PC 10600R PC 3L uh, modules. Essentially, this is a server in a workstation case. Previously, I have been using my, um, I have an R710 and an NX3000, which is a rebadged 710 um, for doing high workloads and, and stuff with VMs, um, but it, they're noisy. And I have a blade server underneath it, which has uh, 16 7, M710 HDs in it. 
Um, so I have a lot of power available to me, but they're really noisy and I don't, I can't do anything when they're running really, I can't work. So having it in a workstation case is actually, the benefit is it's quiet. So I have the power in a quiet case. I have a server in a workstation case. It does ramp up when I uh, push it using a prime test. Is it really an upgrade or is it just sort of a side grade? Uh, it's roughly the same era of technology, it's just way more powerful. So I'll let you discuss upgrade versus side grade in, in the comments. So I picked up my Z600, this one. I picked this up for uh, 60 pounds, around $80. It had in it 24 gig of um, EEC RAM. It had two processors, but they were the E5620. Um, it had a one terabyte of, of spinning rust, and it also had a 256 gig SSD. Um, and it also had a Quadro uh, K, K4000 in it when I purchased it. So it was actually quite a bargain. Um, I got a lot of power for the money, uh, but I have upgrade swaps available for it, so that's why I went with the, the Z600 platform. The downside is it does use a fair bit of power, um, so fully loaded with two 5650s and 48 gig of RAM, under a Prime 95 torture test, this thing at full peak was, was pulling 360 to 370 watts. The fans do ramp up when you when you push it hard. Um, idling, like now, is using about 100 watts uh, to 150 watts, depending on, on where idle is. Um, but in standby or suspend, it uses less than five watts, um, and I'm pretty sure my meter is not that accurate. For context, my 7010 uh, Dell Optiplex uses 100 watts at full load, uh, in, in a torture test and it idled around 50 so I have jumped up in my power usage. So why not a Z200, 400 or 800? Well the 800 is, is a physically bigger case. Um, it comes with additional RAM slots so rather than just having six RAM slots, uh, one for each channel so each CPU has three channels, two CPUs, six channels. Um, in the 800 you have two slots per channel but if you want to use the second slot your memory transfer speed actually drops. This is quite common of uh, of this class of workstation or server. So it drops from 13, 33 mega transfers a second down to 800 mega transfers a second if you want the second slot to be occupied. So that's dropping from 666 megahertz down to 400 megahertz. Uh, see a Tech Tech Potato video on the megahertz versus mega transfers. It's mega transfers, that's what it should be. So for me the Z Z800 only had the advantage of um, it had more PCIe slots and it also has a SAS1 controller on the motherboard. Now the SAS1 controller isn't really going to be a benefit to me because it's no quicker than SATA 3 gigabits a second. I do use SAS drives so it would have been helpful to have a SAS controller however I'm, I have SAS controllers that I can put in the PCI slots if I need to. The Z400 unit is a single CPU uh, and I kind of wanted two. Again I have the, the 5650s that I have in here now. I have lots of them. Um, it's also, the 400 is a 3400 slash 3500 process platform, um, so that wouldn't have worked for me. The 200 is pretty much the same as the 400. The one downside I have with this uh, Z600 is the amount of storage slots that are available. So there's only two, um, of which I have both occupied at the moment. The 800, the Z800 has uh, four internal uh, bays. The 200 has three. Uh, the 400 has two, which is the same as this, but the 200 and 400s have three uh, five and a half inch drives at the top. So you could put external bays in, and that's kind of how you would add extra storage if you needed more than what was already there. I have this handy little multi-card reader, so I'm not going to use these bays for storage, really. I guess if you were looking to build a NAS, the Z600 is not the right case for you. Um, so maybe the 200 or the 800 would be a better machine for a NAS, probably the 200. Something I didn't think about when I bought this was the USB situation. I assumed that they would all be USB 2.0, uh, but they're actually, it appears that some of them are 1.1. Um, it isn't a problem for keyboard and mouse because they're fine at lower speeds, but it's good to know which ones are USB 2 and which ones are USB 1. So for me, I've found out that all of the ports at the front, I've got four USB ports at the front, three on the, on the case, and then one in this uh, media thing. Um, they're all USB 2.0. So for me, USB 1 at the back, not a problem. Keyboard, mouse, printer, they can all go in USB 1.1. 1 
So what will I do with my Dell 7010? So I'm going to be hanging on to it. I'll be using it as a test box for cards and drives. I used to have, well I still do, I have a HP X4600 uh, platform, well X4600 motherboard in a ATX case that I use to use for testing stuff. So whenever I buy a card, I put it in the machine that I don't really care about in case it goes wrong. Um, it was a dual core and it had, I think it's got four gig of DDR2 RAM in it. So the plan is, is that my new test machine will be the 7010 and I will get rid of the 4600. I hope that this is 600 with its 5650s and 48 gig of RAM will serve me well for a couple of years. Uh, it, sh it will give me the performance I need to edit larger videos and also run more VMs simultaneously while recording. If you have any questions about the Z600, stick them in the comments. Assuming I still have the Z600, I will do my best to answer them. So thanks for watching and let me know any questions.